Hey everyone, it's Amanda with My Life, My Way, and welcome back to TTC Tuesdays. So, this channel is my TTC journey uh, and our struggles with infertility. And there's a lot of women, uh, and maybe even men out there that are following me because you are also on a TTC journey of your own, uh, and you may be struggling with infertility issues of your own as well. Um, and there may be people that are following me who are TTCing and aren't sure yet if there is an issue with uh, infertility in their lives. And a lot of people might not be sure when to go get help or uh, how to seek help or what the assistance really looks like and kind of what um, sort of an infertility journey looks like once you get on this track. So today I kind of want to talk about, talk about um, when to see a doctor um, and kind of what to expect from that first doctor's appointment. Um, and I'll talk in further segments about uh, the different types of testing and things like that, um, results of the testing and things that you may end up doing along your infertility journey. So generally people are considered infertile if you've been actively trying for one year. Um, actively trying means you've been tracking your ovulation, having timed intercourse and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, they say usually if you've been trying for that 12 months to start seeking help at that point, um, Although they do suggest you seek help at six months if you fall into sort of any of the following groups. The first one is if you're a woman over the age of 35, just because at that age, um, basically the clock is starting to tick, right? Um, they also suggest it after only six months if you're not having menstrual cycles. If you're not having menstrual cycles, it means you're not ovulating and it means half the party isn't showing up and it doesn't matter how many times you have sex, it's not going to work for you. Uh, they also suggested if your cycles are longer than 35 days, um, up to 35 days is still considered normal, but after the 35 day mark, it usually means that there's something going on. Um, if your periods are very light, they also suggest that you, uh, get help. It may mean that your lining is not building up properly or you might have other underlying issues. Um, if either you or your partner have undergone chemotherapy or radiation, I feel on those lines because it can significantly affect your fertility. Um, if the female partner knows or suspects that they have uterine or tubal problems, pelvic infections, endometriosis, anything along those lines. Uh, if the male partner involved has a history of um, testicular trauma or surgery, uh, they had mumps as an adult or any kind of sexual dysfunction, and there's lots of them, uh, they usually say, again, seek that treatment within six months. Uh, or if either one of you have had fertility problems with a previous partner. Um, so if you had, if you were trying, even if you didn't seek help uh, and you and your past partner were unable to conceive, um, who knows which one of you the issue was with, but it, they're generally suggesting if you've been trying for six months with your new partner and you still have not conceived, um, then you guys should start seeking some assistance. Um... So I put it out to some infertility groups and I was asking what stopped them from seeking assistance. So I'm 32. I was 31 when we first started um, going through our TTC journey. And my husband and I went and saw a fertility doctor at, or I saw a family doctor at nine months to get a referral out to a fertility doctor. Um, just because the referrals around here usually take on average about six months. So by the time that we made it through the six month waiting period, we'd be more than a year before we saw a fertility doctor. And I figured if we got pregnant that we just cancel the appointment and that's not a big deal. Um, so I was fairly early and kind of on the ball with it. Um, but I was talking to a couple of girls that said, you know, they've, they're, they've been trying to TTC for three or four years now without ever seeing a doctor. So I put it out to some of the groups I'm in and asked what, was preventing them from seeking assistance. Um, and the biggest reason I got back is that nobody's willing to admit that there's actually a problem yet. So according to the government of Canada, um, roughly one in six couples will experience infertility issues. Um, one in six means that infertility is a lot more normal than we thought. Um, that's a lot of people. <laughs> um, so you're you're more likely to suffer from infertility than you are to rent a free cup of coffee through roll at the rim. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, sorry, if you're not Canadian, you probably won't catch that reference, but it is much more common than you'd like to know about. Um, a lot of people say that they're worried that they're the problem. There's some societal expectations 
that women are supposed to have babies, men are supposed to make great sperm. And there's this societal expectation that we should be doing that. Um, the problem is with infertility being as common as it is, um, that expectation's not very reasonable. Um, and I am the problem in my relationship. I have PCOS. My husband's sperm count is fine. All his numbers and everything, his antigen tests have all come back fine. So I know that I'm the problem. And every once in a while I mention to my husband, it, the only day it really bothers me is Father's Day. And the last year that we went past one, um, I cried and I called him and I told him I felt terrible that I was the reason he wasn't a father. Um, and he laughed at me. <laughs> he basically said that I'm the reason that he'll finally be able to become a father. So, you know, you kind of got to roll with it um, and sort of get past that hump of, of you being the issue. It's, it's not a you problem. One in six couples struggles with infertility. That's an immense number of people. Um, some people are worried because they've already had one baby and they're worried that the doctors won't take them seriously. Um, secondary infertility is a very real issue for a lot of women and men suffering from infertility where they were able to conceive one, maybe even two babies, totally normal, without having any problems. And now that they're trying to try, now that they're trying again for another baby, They've been going for well over a year and haven't been able to conceive. Um, it's called secondary infertility. It's a very real condition. Um, and please don't let it hold you back that, okay, well, you've had one and it was natural and it was fine. So there shouldn't be any issues. Um, as we get older, things change. Things suck. Um, they just kind of break down and don't work as well as they used to. It's just kind of the way the reality works. Um, and things may have changed in your body that may have altered your ability to get pregnant. Um, and one of the other reasons I heard of is I, I don't know where to start. So that's what this segment's going to be all about. Um, and I'm hoping to answer some of those questions about where to start and how the process at least begins uh, to take some of the fear and some of the worry out of that first step. Um, one of the biggest things about getting help is making sure that it's a joint effort. Make sure that both of you guys are going in to see a doctor together uh, and make sure that you're both on board with seeking treatment um, and talk about it. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of, again, worrying that you're the problem um, and you're worried that your partner may or may not accept you if they're if you are the issue. Um, so talk about it. Roll some of those feelings out. Discuss them. Um, and just sort of move through them a little bit. And then when you go to see the doctor, make sure you do that together too. Uh, for a full fertility workup, they're going to need to see both of you anyways. Um, there's blood work and ultrasounds and histories and things that need to be done for both of you. Um, and it's more difficult if you only go in one at a time or if you send one partner in to rule one partner out as being the issue. Uh, before you look at the second partner, you could be looking at a huge delay in moving into the actual fertility treatments if you need them. So how do you start? Who do you go talk to is kind of a huge issue. Um, the first step for a lot of people is either talking to their OBG if they already see one, or for people like me that didn't have one, I just went and saw my uh, family doctor, my primary doctor, my primary care doctor. Um, most of them will send out a referral to a fertility specialist for you. Um, a fertility specialist, by the way, is an OBG who has additional years of schooling that's specific to the testing and the procedures that actually come out uh, or that are required for fertility processes or for fertility, fertility patients. Sorry. Um, but while you're waiting for that referral, because in some areas like where I am, it takes about six months to get in, give or take a little bit. Um, your family doctor or your primary care doctor, or your OBG can send you for some of the initial testing uh, while you're waiting for that referral, just to rule out some of the basic stuff. Um, you know, make sure that you're ovulating, make sure that his semen analysis comes out properly, that kind of stuff. Um, so your first appointment with your fertility specialist is going to focus on really on taking a history and getting a full physical done. Um, when they're talking about a medical history, they're going to ask for histories from both of you. Um, it's going to get a little personal. That's totally okay. Uh, but make sure that you're honest about the responses to those questions and any issues you might be having. Um, I'm going to go through just in here in a second, um, a bunch of things they're going to ask 
Uh, it might be a good idea for you to talk about it with your partner ahead of time just so that you're not surprised in there by any answers. Because let's face it, um, there's always going to be a few surprises. There are things you're going to learn about your partner as you move through life that you didn't maybe know before. So the first one they're going to ask is sort of a personal history. They're going to ask about medical conditions, your allergies, your medications, your immunization status. Um, for men specifically, they're going to ask about your testicles and did they descend during infancy like they were supposed to? Um, and what age did you go through puberty at? Because that'll affect when your body started producing sperm. They'll also ask about family history like genetic disorders, birth defects, things like that. Uh, fertility issues in other people in your family. They're going to ask you about racial and ethnic backgrounds. It's not a racial thing. Don't worry about it. Try not to be offended by it. Um, it's because some backgrounds are more prone to certain medical conditions than others. Uh, and that's all they're trying to uh, check into. They're also going to ask about your sexual history. This is where it starts to get a little bit more personal. Uh, they're going to ask how long you've been trying for. Uh, they're going to ask if you know and understand your cycle. Do you know and understand when you're ovulating? That kind of thing. Um, and we will be talking more in depth here in the next couple of segments in this channel uh, for TTC Tuesdays. We're going to talk next week about um, your cycle a little more in depth. And then the next couple will be different types of ovulation tracking and things you can look for to make sure that you know your fertile time. They're also going to ask you about prior pregnancies, fertility issues with past partners, things like that. Um, they're going to ask about lubricants um, because there are TTC friendly lubricants. If they're not labeled specifically as being TTC friendly, it means they're not TTC friendly. Uh, most sperm are of a pH balance that's actually not healthy for sperm. Um, doesn't mean a few of them can't get through. It just means it significantly reduces your ability to get pregnant. Um, they'll also ask you how often do you have sex, especially during your fertile time or having sex every day, every two days, not at all. Um, you know, in situations like mine, my husband works out of town, so it gets a little more tricky to make sure we can have sex during our fertile window. Um, they may ask you about any male sexual dysfunction or issues with other partner achieving orgasm. Um, they'll talk about lack of sex drive with either you or your partner, um, STIs, they'll probably also have you checked for STIs or uh, sexually transmitted infections. That's fine. That's totally normal. Um, they're also going to ask you about your lifestyle habits between both you and your partner, like smoking, drinking, drug use, diet and exercise, stress levels, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they may ask you about your working conditions. Um, what you do for a living is a risk of occupational exposure to chemicals, that kind of thing. Um, working night shift or shift work which amazingly enough can actually affect your infertility. We'll probably talk about it uh, in future sections, but it can. Um, they'll do a basic physical exam, so your basic, your height, your weight, your blood pressure, all the kind of fun stuff. Uh, they may do a pelvic exam for females. They're looking for any obvious abnormalities or infections. Um, they're looking for the size, the shape, the position of your uterus. They'll be assessing for any pain, any tenderness uh, in your abdomen, that kind of stuff. Uh, they'll also do a male examination. They're looking for tenderness, for swelling, signs of infection in the testicles, the scrotum, the penis, all that kind of fun stuff. They may also do a prostate exam. Don't worry about it. It's normal. Just breathe. <laughs> um, you may want to bring a list of questions with you as well when you come to this appointment. It can be very overwhelming uh, for a lot of people to kind of take this much information in. Um, that they're going to be giving you on your first day because they're going to talk about future appointments and testing they want you to get done right away. Um, so you may want to just bring a pen and paper uh, to A, write things down and B, to have those questions written out so you can remember to ask them. Uh, by the time you get a little overwhelmed, you're going to totally forget your questions and that's perfectly normal. Uh, you may also want to bring a list of the medications and the supplements that you've been taking, um, be them herbal or prescribed, doesn't matter. Um, keep in mind, this is your first exam. So it's only the beginning of a process. Um, they don't usually jump right into, here's a prescription for fertility medication. We'll see you in a month and we'll see how this goes. There's usually further testing that's going to be required um, just to kind of identify if there's any issues and the source of any of those issues. Um, so when they're talking about further testing, whew, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, further testing is going to be looking for your main causes of infertility. Um, so they're going to be looking for the eggs, the sperm, the tubes, and your uterus, your fallopian tubes and your uterus. Um, 
these tests may need to be completed at certain times in your cycle, so it might take a few months to get through all of the testing. That's perfectly normal. Try to be as patient as you can. Uh, I know by the time you start seeing your fertility doctor, you're ready to finally be pregnant. Um, but you kind of have to go through the motions, and there's lots of support groups around for you to get into for you to talk about those kinds of feelings too. Um, some basic blood tests that, or some basic tests that might be ordered, sorry. Um, and I'll be talking about each of these more in depth in other segments as we kind of move through TTC Tuesdays. But the first one is blood work. Um, they're looking for basic health in both partners, your thyroid function, that kind of thing. Uh, in your female partners, they're going to be looking for luteinizing hormone, which is the one that, um, says that ovulation is coming. They're going to be looking for progesterone to make sure that ovulation has actually occurred, uh, they're looking for follicle stimulation hormone and for ovarian reserve in your female partner as well. And they'll be looking for testosterone levels in your male partners. They may also do abdominal exams for both partners. Uh, it may accrue, include a scrotal ultrasound for your male partner and transvaginal ultrasounds for female partners. Um, the transvaginal ultrasounds, by the way, sound really scary. Um, I've had more of them than I'd like to admit to at this point in my fertility journey. Um, but the probe, so to speak, is not very big. Um, it's well lubricated and it's really not that uncomfortable of a process. It's just a little weird. Um, but other than that, it's, it's totally fine. Um, abdominal ultra, or sorry, they might also check your uterus for abnormalities. Um, things like sonohistographies or hysteroscopies, things like that. Um, they may do a laparoscopy as well, but it's fairly rare. Um, they may also, also do a, an HSG test, um, which is kind of a special x-ray that's meant to check to make sure your fallopian tubes are open, and they'll probably do a semen analysis um, to look for the count, the shape, the movement, that kind of thing in your um, sperm. Um, sperm are created daily, like I was talking about in our last episode. So it's not uncommon for them to be repeated a couple of times just to make sure that there's uh, consistently good sperm quality. Um, they may also do a sperm antibody test and it basically makes sure that you don't have killer sperm. Um, Cause as cool as that sounds, it's not really good for fertility. Anyways, so that's kind of the basic testing. Like I said, each of those tests we're kind of going to go into in more further depth in the next couple episodes, uh, just so you kind of understand what they are, what to expect when you go for these testings. But the basics of it is, as you move through your fertility journey, stay positive and work through it together. Really talk about it. Um, communication tends to be a lot harder, especially when there's guilt in the way. Uh, you know, you're worried that you're the problem or you've had 